Hello, 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 everyone. What's going on? It's James here, and today I will be giving you my UFC 257 predictions. So, yeah, let's get into this then. First things first. Whoops. <laughs> first things first. Khalil Roundtree versus Marcin uh, Pracnia. So, Marcin has lost three fights in the UFC, two KOs, one TKO. Not really the best, to be honest. I feel like the UFC are just giving him to Khalil so Khalil can get an easy win. He did lose to uh, Cubetta, which obviously I know Khalil did land a few decent punches on him here and there, but Cubetta took him down and just ground and pounded him. So this should be a really, really easy win for Khalil. I mean, he looked amazing in the Eric Anders fight, so it just it just seems like the UFC just really like him and they just want to do something good for him. I don't really know why, because Khalil did say ages ago, I don't know if he was booked, but he said, this is just for my family. I'm going to retire from MMA in my next fight. So he's not really going to stay around and make the UFC money, but maybe because Khalil is such a nice, humble guy. Um, he works really, really hard. Well, obviously, like the majority of fighters do. And he just seems to, you know, that he, he's just the sort of guy who will fight anyone and everyone. And he puts on amazing performances and exciting fights. So, yeah, um, Khalil should just win this one, to be honest. And if he retires after this, I mean, fair play. But if he gets an easy win, you'd you'd think he would want to continue fighting. But I mean, he's he's got the money for his family now. So, well, he hasn't. I'm not. I'm guessing he hasn't got loads and loads of money. But he's probably got quite a decent amount of money. So he probably could retire if he wants to. It's um, his choice. He could easily go into training, maybe. I don't know. Maybe go into Muay Thai. They don't make the best money, but if that's what he really loves, he could do that, training at Tiger Muay Thai. But yeah, I'm predicting a first round KO for Khalil Roundtree. Next fight is Amanda Hebas versus Marina Rodriguez. It's a striker versus grappler matchup. I mean, Marina is 33 and Amanda is 27. And Marina had a close fight against Carla Spiles in her last fight, but Miranda's just, I mean, ugh. yeah, Amanda has just been submitting people left, right, and sent, well, not loads and loads, but she, you know, got an amazing submission on Paige Van Zandt, So, And also, she's been in martial arts her whole life. Her dad um, trains people in Muay Thai and uh, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and. Amanda was on the um, Brazilian judo team. I'm pretty sure it was the national team. So, yeah. Well, obviously, it's the national team. So, yeah. She's very, very good. She'll probably be able to maybe get her up in the clinch, trip her up, then get a submission. I mean, Marina has only been... Um, she's only been... I think it's about... She's only been training for six years or seven years, I think. So, I mean, she's older which obviously the younger person, you know, they're, they're just better physically, but also she hasn't got the experience in training. She's got more fights. She's got, she's had like 15 fights and which is, you know, more than Amanda Hibas has had, but yeah, she'll probably just get submitted first round submission for Amanda. So next fight is Hakeem Dawadu versus Shane Burgos. Now Shane is an absolutely massive featherweight. He comes forward. He loves getting in the pocket with people. He has an iron chin on him. Um, he's an amazing volume puncher as well. He's got power, but he's got volume as well. So that's pretty good. Um, and yeah, his chin's amazing. It's mad that he cuts so much weight and his chin's still really good. So fair play to him. Hakeem is great at landing <laughs> strikes to the body. You know, he's quite good at that. He's decent in the clinch and his grappling's okay. Maybe he could get Shane Burgos down for one round, but then... In the second round, I can just see Shane coming at him and just whooping him, to be honest. But Hakeem is a really, really good striker. But I feel like when you're against Shane, you have to have the power behind you, like someone like Josh Emmett and um, Calvin Cater. If you haven't got the power behind you and you can't hurt him, then he's just going to put the volume on you and either knock you out or get a cheeky decision win. So I think Shane Burgos gets a second round uh, TKO, in my opinion. Now on to the main event, Conor McGregor versus Dustin Poirier too. Quite excited for this, to be honest. I mean, McGregor since 2016, he hasn't fought much. He, he fought Mayweather, then he fought Khabib, then he did that um, charity boxing bout. Obviously, you can't really count that. Then he fought Cerrone and looked amazing against Cerrone. McGregor seemed a lot more keen and 
like he was in train, like you know, into training a lot more. Because obviously, once you get a hundred million, it's hard to motivate yourself, I suppose, and it's hard to motivate yourself taking on someone like Khabib. But yeah, yeah. But Poirier, you know, he's improved since their first bout in 2014. He's improved by loads. He's amazing at getting in the pocket and landing decent punches on people. Obviously, he's not that fast, but he's got great volume, great stamina, great footwork, great cardio. Way better than before. And I don't know if McGregor's going to go for the psychological approach on him this time and like he did last time and the mental warfare, him having a go at him. But I don't think that'll work on him this time. I really don't think it'll work. Um, so I think McGregor will probably be able to KO Poirier again. Probably in the third round this time, Poirier's better than he was, but he just can't handle the pressure in my opinion. Could be pressed him and managed to get him down and submit him. Um, Dan Hooker pressed him loads in the first two. Poirier's got ju good jujitsu, so maybe, maybe could take McGregor down and mix things up. I don't know, but I can't really see that happening. So I think McGregor will get a KO on him, in my opinion. Um, so I haven't obviously given all my predictions, but I'll, I'll show up more predictions now um, somewhere around here. Of fights that I haven't given much of an, an analysis to, so they'll come up now. But yeah, um, thanks for watching, guys. Really appreciate it. Appreciate it. If you did enjoy it, please like and subscribe. If you didn't, well, then yeah, whatever. Um, go and watch someone else, I guess. Thanks for watching anyway, and see ya.